Mammothus primigenius, also known as the Northern or Siberian Mammoth, descends from a group of ancient African elephants called Mammothus africanavis, which lived around 3.5 million years ago. Slowly but surely, over the next hundreds of thousands of years, mammoths known as Mammothus merodionalis marched their way northward into the Eurasian region of the world. During the earlier years of the Pleistocene era, a span of time from a little over 2 million years ago to about 11,500 years ago, mammoths living on the eastern coast of Eurasia journeyed across the Bering Strait into North America. But isn't there like some water separating the two land masses? Yes. Yes, there is. Here's the deal. Over 30,000 years ago, the sea level was hundreds of feet below where it sits today, and the strip of water between Siberia and North America is actually relatively shallow. When the waters descended, the land beneath became exposed, and in the late 1930s, Swedish botanist Eric Holten gave the connecting land the name Beringia. Over 10,000 years of animal and human foot traffic later, the land bridge became swallowed up by the sea once again. Once the middle of the Pleistocene era came, a new genus of mammoth had emerged, Mammothus impurator, although this claim is still being questioned. Nonetheless, by the late Pleistocene, Mammothus columbi, or Mammothus jeffersoni, roamed North America and as far south as Central America. The last of the woolly mammoth's existence came to a close around 4,000 years ago. This was due to a variety of factors, including our ancestors, obviously, their remote habitats, lack of biodiversity, climate change, disease, and harsh weather conditions. The most recent mammoths we have evidence of lived on Wrangell Island, a chunk of land north of Russia between the East Siberian Sea and the Chukchi Sea that broke off of Asia nearly 10,000 years ago. Their extinction was roughly 7,000 years after the ancient beasts made their way onto the island, which is about the same amount of time that this isolated population outlived their mainland brethren. Rising sea levels would have made it impossible for the lumbering behemoths to escape starvation if the vegetation were to freeze. As well, the bedrock of the island began to deteriorate, releasing sulfur, strontium, and other harmful substances into their drinking supply as the remains of the mammoths suggest. Not exactly ideal if you would want to, oh, I don't know, survive. A similar isolated population of mammoths also managed to survive a few thousand years longer than those on the mainland, on the island of St. Paul in Alaska. While not kicking around quite as long as those on Wrangell Island, they still were able to make it to about five and a half thousand years ago. It's possible that the island ran out of usable fresh water. Modern elephants can drink up to 40 gallons of water per day, so a tiny little island really isn't going to cut it if you're one of the largest mammals to ever exist. No one is quite sure how dramatically the quality of water affected the mammoths, and in the case of Wrangell Island, human hunting was unlikely to play a role in their demise. We've only found one site where humans were stationed, and it wasn't even a village or anything. Archaeological evidence points to the site being used for hunting marine mammals and geese. Even with this evidence, it is believed that the human location succeeded the habitation of mammoths on the island. Instead, a more likely candidate for the giant's extinction would be some kind of icing event, where a rain-on-snow combination creates a near-impenetrable layer of ice on top of the snow. This would make it very difficult for the mammoths to get enough nutrition to survive. In 2003, 20,000 musk oxen, which was 25% of their population, were killed off due to a similar event on Banks Island in northern Canada. And mammoths weren't the only species to take a hit from this deadly weather phenomenon on Wrangell Island. At least thousands of reindeer have perished on the island in the past century alone. 
In regards to disease, the small population of mammoths on these isolated islands wouldn't have made for a wide range of biodiversity, which is essential if a species has to adapt. The inbreeding could have caused unfavorable genetic mutations, making them more susceptible to environmental factors and leaving them unable to diversify their genetic makeup quickly enough to outlast the harsh conditions. The last mammoths in North America could have existed until around 8,000 years ago, and as I stated, the very last of the entire species kept at it until just over 4,000 years ago. This means that while there were still mammoths making the earth shake beneath their feet, the pyramids could have already been around for a few hundred years. Pretty incredible, honestly. Unfortunately, woolly mammoth tusks are kind of a big deal to the black market, which means we've no doubt missed some fascinating discoveries over the years. Perhaps we've unearthed thousands of their tusks, but as far as soft-tissued, well-preserved mammoth specimens go, we've only found about a dozen, the most popular of which is Layuba, who was a baby from Siberia, who most likely passed away choking on mud about 40,000 years ago. But the oldest frozen mammoth bodies we have found are nearly 60,000 years old. Talk of bringing back mammoths is one of the most repeated scientific topics in recent years. Some of the carcasses we have found are so well preserved that we have vials of blood, intact hair, and DNA. But is it actually possible? The answer is kind of, yeah. While we may have been able to insert mammoth genes into the DNA of elephant skin cells, we've only figured out about 80% of their DNA. Not only that, but the eggs of mammoths and Asian elephants may not even be all that compatible. It will require a lot of trial and error, and it will take a lot of elephant eggs, perhaps maybe even a thousand, just to get it mostly right. However, considering elephant numbers have dwindled significantly over the years, it may take decades, or even longer, just to find a set of conditions that are suitable to produce a viable sample. Long story short, yeah, it's probably possible, but this is not going to be an easy feat. In addition, concerns come up over where mammoths would even live, if the bacteria that inhabits their stomach is even still around, if they'd be well suited enough to handle modern day pressures like climate change and poaching, or if they'll be able to get along eating the vegetation that exists today. Look, no one is more excited about mammoth resurrection than me, but this is going to take some time, let's be honest. Woolly mammoths are some of the most interesting creatures that have ever roamed the Northern Hemisphere. They've coexisted beside us in the distant past, and they may just rejoin us again very soon. They're studied and talked about in excess, and yet we know so little. But as the permafrost gets peeled back and the more carcasses are discovered, the gaps in our biological understanding will shrink. This legendary creature was painted on the walls of caves of prehistoric man, and today, it paints our computer monitors with the same shroud of mystery. Know that the most powerful tool for learning is interest. Let me know what you're interested in. Maybe I'll make a video about it. The links to all of my sources can be found in the description of this video, and thank you so, so much for watching.